Hey, welcome back to Big Red Zone. We are very excited for today's show. Remember, new episodes come out every Wednesday. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video as well as all our other videos. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, and you can also find us on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Big Red Zone as well as TikTok at Big Red Zone. And tell a friend. This week... Uh, we're going to talk a little NFL. Huge win for the first place in the AFC New England Patriots. The Pats are in that game, as well as check out uh, a couple other games in the league. Of course, our waiver pickup picks of the week and our little rundown of the Sox and Celtics. All that and more in this week's episode of the Big Red Zone. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Big Red Zone. I'm your host, Big Red. As always, I'm joined by Danny Football. How are we doing, Big Red? Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Uh, just started coaching again. Back at it. Uh, uh, got the whistle. Broke the whistle back out <laughs> for this time of the year. Uh, and we are back at it one week in. First game Thursday. And uh, very excited to get the season started. Uh and Danny Football had a fun week. Uh, made his way back to his uh, home, home sweet home. The old UMass alma mater, Lowell. UMass Lowell. Huge game against Amherst on Friday. 5-4 win and shootouts. First time seeing college shootouts. Crazy game. Riverhawks got the win. I couldn't have been happier. T- t- I, I was going to say tease it a little bit because we're, we're going to – we got to – we'll give you your uh, – That'll be the tease, but I got – I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go All on right. the game. The, Tune in later in the show. Uh, we're going to talk about a little UMass Lowell hockey, uh, as well as sadly, we'll give one last shout out to what used to be the hottest team in that New hurt, England. Man, that fucking hurt so that, bad. That was uh, that hurt so bad to watch. I don't want to. Damn. I, I, that's the te- We'll tease it. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have a good feeling going into it, and I feel really bad. I didn't have a good feeling going into the playoffs. When you sit a month. Yeah, uh, I, I was through. about to say the same thing. I I hated how long that that buy was. It was just too long to be sitting on your sitting on your butt. Yeah, but we'll get into it later in the show. Uh, let's start with our first segment of the night weekend recap. It's the weekend recap. So for weekend recap, we break down three games from the NFL week. Normally we record on Monday night, Danny football, but we said we have to wait for the New England Patriots. And I'm so glad we waited for that game. But before we get into that, do you hear that, Danny football? You hear that sound? I'm listening hard for it. I'm not, that, I, I can't make it That's the sound out. of no more. There's no teams without a, uh, without a win in the NFL. The Lions find a way to beat the Vikings. And the first thing that comes to mind, how, how long does uh, Zimmer have for this Vikings team when we're blowing games against the Lions? Not great, dude. Giving up a walk-off win to the 0-10 and 1 Lions is not <laughs> the best way to keep your job. I, don't, I just don't get out of this team. I mean, yes, Cook is out. But yeah, Madison, who is just as like when it cooks out, like in fantasy football, I played Madison this this week in two leagues and he got me 20 points. Like he's over 100 yards. He gets a touchdown like he's a dependable back that you can cycle in there. You have Jefferson Thielen. I know I got hurt. Uh, and, you know, Kirk Cousins is a manageable quarterback that will get you, you know, put you in a good position. I have no idea how the Lions, without their number one running back, beats you. That's like embarrassing. That's, that's that can that cannot happen. But uh, before we get into that, uh, going with that, um, you mentioned it. Walk off, walk off play from Goff to Brown. That was an unbelievable, badly defended play. I feel like they just was an easy, like, like it wasn't even covered on the play. You know, he's going to the end zone. It's like, what are we doing? 
I'm not really sure what they were expecting on that. It was, I didn't watch the game. I, I saw the highlights after. That was just an epic, epic choke job by the Vikings, man. I, I couldn't believe it. So where do the Vikings go from here? I mean, like, we were talking about this at, in the beginning of the season. We were like, at least for me, I looked at it as a potential playoff team. Like, they have the pieces to make, like, not make a run, but make the playoffs. And now it's like, they got to do some soul search in these last four weeks or last five weeks. So, I mean, you look around the roster. I mean, Justin Jefferson's obviously a huge bright spot for that team. Kirk Cousins, I mean, I'm not really sure where they go from here with Kirk Cousins. Dalvin Cook is top five running back in the league, but health issues there. They have a lot of questions this offseason. And, and you mentioned Zimmer earlier, so it's going to be a lot of questions of maybe a coaching change. Do we kind of make a change of quarterback? The defense is abysmal from what, you yeah. know, clearly if you're losing yeah. to the Lions, it's abysmal defense. So this offseason is going to be a lot of questions of quarterback change, uh, coaching change, completely rebuilding the defense, building around that young those young players and Cook and uh, Jefferson. Cook, if you trust him enough to stay healthy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a messy, messy offseason for the Vikings. Yeah, and I mean, offensively, they do have, like you said, they do have the weapons. Like, And don't forget, I know he's kind of older. He's not part of that young group that you talked about. Adam Thielen is a very serviceable running uh, wide receiver as well. So I think you're right. I think they need to go out there. And I mean, there's a bunch of quarterbacks out there that are, you know, I think going to be on the market. Like, you know, do we see, uh, I mean, is this a big red zone call? I don't know. We may need to go back in the vault for this when it, when the off season happens, but do we see a potential Green Bay Packer join just like following his uh, predecessor, Brett Favre. Wow. And leaving and coming to the Vikings. I don't know. That's a, that's a potential, uh, you know, that's a potential uh, play there. You know, I mean, if that I'm would... Aaron Rodgers, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I would love to play with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, like, right. Yeah. And I left out Thielen, but he's, he's not old, but he's, you know, he's entering like 32, 33. He's entering the mid part of his career, but. That would be insane if Aaron Rodgers took a page out of Brett Favre's book and went to the Vikings. That that would be something, man. You're not wrong. I mean, the pieces are there. They would need to do a huge up, upgrade on the defense. Oh, 100%. And get, a, and get a coach that he wants. But if if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I see Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson and the Vikings are giving me a blank check, uh, it's hard to turn down. Yeah, I think I think that would be interesting. I think that would be kind of a cool storyline too for the uh, NFL, and I think that would be funny to see like Brett Favre. You know, he's basically you know same thing happened to Aaron Rodgers is like you know they draft the next it coming. He doesn't want to be done. He unretires, comes to the Vikings, and milks a couple more years out of his career. And what does his predecessor do? goes to the same thing he, he comes to the vikings and tries to lead them to a uh you know a playoff run so i think that would be cool and, and then i we'll mean see aaron Rodgers on the jets in the afc east so yeah we go <laughs> and lose go at least he'll do better than uh zach wilson oh my god zach Alex. wilson had a good week this week danny football yeah what week is it again <laughs> The number two pick in the league, and he's finally hitting his stride. He's finally hitting his stride. Hey, what, some 13 week 13 took him 13 weeks to finally reach it. Good to know. You know. Some say that this is the most important time of the season. I think the Jets are mathematically eliminated in week <laughs> two. So if he wants to, if he wants to start cashing in on garbage time, he can. Um, let's move on from the Lions Vikings game. Um, Huge upset. I, I was shocked. Huge upset. It, it was cool to see how much that win meant to um Dan Campbell. That oh see, yeah. To see a coach jumping up and down on the sideline hugging his quarterback. He you you can clearly see how much that meant to him. Yeah, I mean no one wants to go oh and now no, 17. No, no. So like to make get that win against a good team, it's like get the monkey off your back too. Yeah. First win for Dan Campbell as a head coach. Count it. Could be his only one. 
Um, <laughs> he'll always have it. He'll always have it. He'll have one. He has one more win than us. True, true. Um, Steelers Ravens. I watched this game. This was an unbelievable game. This is uh, back and forth. Uh, exactly what the doctor ordered for some football. I'm trying to pull up the stat line, but um, it's back and forth. Did you watch this game? I did not watch it. Really, what I took out of this game was I thought the Steelers were dead in the water, man. After the shit show they put on against the Bengals and how bad Roethlisberger looked, I thought the Steelers were dead in the water. But I got to give them credit, man. They showed a little bit of fight against the Ravens. Interdivision game. This is a huge rivalry game. Steelers, Ravens. It's always hard hitting, always physical. And, dude, they, they went in. They punched the Ravens right in the mouth, and they took the W. Lamar Jackson, uh, he, he, I'm not going to say it was his best game ever because it clearly wasn't. They, they, they just, took, they just took, took it on the chin and lost. So I'm not saying the Steelers are elite by any means. I'm not saying they're a threat to win the AFC, but they're still, they're still in the hunt. They're still in the hunt. I'll give them that much. And the Ravens took a big step back. So they, we'll talk about it later with the Pats, but, you know, Losing that number one seed, we especially with the new playoff um, playoff structure, that number one seed is huge. Right. For the Ravens to lose control of that and not have the uh, number one seed be controlled by their own destinies is critical. Yeah. Um, I also want to start by saying thank you to Deontay Johnson for helping <laughs> me make the playoffs and getting me into week one. Uh, that guy had a huge day, 105 yards, eight receptions and two touchdowns. I think you're right. I mean, part of it is, you know, the Ravens did a good job coming back and, you know, Harbaugh, I can't, can't blame him. He made a gutsy call to go for two, to just go and win it right there. You know, he scored a touchdown and kicked the extra point and go into overtime, but he wanted to win it right there. They had all the momentum in that game. And it didn't work out. It was a, a pretty bad play. Um, but, I mean, you're right. I think this is a huge win for the Pats because now they got that one seed kind of uh, – they got the one seed right now. They got to finish it. But now they're in control. They're in the driver's seat. Um, the Steelers, you know, been at a decent game. I think the difference in this game was the running game. I, like this, you can't be one dimensional in this league. We're going to talk about it with the Pats and Bills. Like that's the problem with the Bills. They have no running game. And uh, when you're leading rusher, as we always say, is you, if your leading rusher is your quarterback, that's probably not a good sign. And Devontae Freeman, you know, he had a pretty good day, 52 yards on the ground with a touchdown. And then it, I know he had some, uh, he had like 40, uh, yeah, five receptions, 45 yards on the ground. So, I mean, he did a good job, but you need to get, you need to, in this league right now, you need to have someone in the backfield that is a threat and that teams are, have to game plan for. If you're just so one dimensional, unless you're the Patriots who throw the ball three times in a game and they know you're going to run the football, uh, it takes a that that's a very hard thing to do to make someone just know you're running you're throwing it or you're pat, running like you need to have two dimensional play. So I'm not really scared of the Ravens at all. No, you know I, it's they, it's pretty evident that they're not the juggernaut they once were. Yeah. So I mean, good win for the Steelers. I love T.J. Watt. I wish I played him this week. I, for some reason, I didn't have him in. Uh, but big win for the Steelers and even bigger win for the Pats with this win. Uh, let's get to the, the main game of the, of the week. Pats bills, Monday night football, terrible conditions. When goalpost was ready to be blown back to new England, right up our was, fucking alley, man, right up, right our up alley. our alley, right Snow. up the alley. So did you hear him uh, early in the week? He's like, yeah, we practice in the snow. We practice in rain. We practice in the did sun. Did you see the video of the uh, locker room after the win? He literally said, this is why we practice in this shit. Yeah. And that's why he's the best coach of all time oh, right yeah. there. Um, and also got to shout out David Andrews before the game in a cutoff and shorts <laughs> in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, nails. 
He, I, I just, my two cents, uh, I, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it, but as, as much as the score doesn't show it, like, because the score will show a tight game. It was a tight game back and forth. Uh, not really back and forth, but it was a tight game, you know, 14-10. Uh, this is right where the score, about where the score I thought was going to be uh, with the conditions that they were under. But Danny Football, I'm going to say it right now, the Patriots dominated this game. 1,000%. I was going to say they, this was... They, this was a complete physical domination of a football game, save for the Nikhil Harry fuck up on the punt, which handed right. him a touchdown, and then save for the phantom uh, personal foul on Bryant, which was also bullshit, which handed them a yeah. field goal. If you right. take away the muffed punt and you take away the uh, personal foul, this game ends 14 zip. The Bills right. don't score shit if not for those two things happening. Right. And I guess you could also argue that, you know, oh, well, the Bills fu- the Bills fumbled. That has nothing to do with it because regardless, the Pats are winning this game. So if you take away the two mistakes, one by Nikhil Harry and one by the officiating, it's not a close game. It's a 14-0 game in which the, the Patriots told the Bills every single play, we're going to run it, there's nothing you can do about it, and then they did it. Mac Jones throws three passes, two are completed, and there was never a doubt in my mind who was winning this game. Never a doubt. You have two people. Damian Harris, part of it because of the long run, 111 yards. Monday Stevenson, 78 yards. They told him, and then obviously the rest of the guys running the ball. We had a bunch of people running. But it's like you said, we told you, we are running it down your throat every time. And did they get stops on third down? Three and outs, yes. But I think that's the difference. Bill had confidence in the game plan. And he's like, all right, we'll punt. We'll play the field position game. And we will run it down your throat. Right. And I, I'm just so impressed with this team. You know, people are going to say Mac Jones didn't prove it. I mean, he threw th- two, three passes that's bullshit. to complete. That's bullshit because... But the, I was going to say, I, I agree. It's, it's not right because he, it's the game plan. He managed the game and he did. He, he was a leader on that field for that game. And I just think this proves that this football team is to make it to the Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, I said it preseason. I've said it mid season. I'm saying it now. This is Super Bowl team right here. Mac Jones is going to do what Tom Brady did. Uh, his second year in the league, and they're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now. I I believe it because I know a lot of people were joking last night that this was like watching um, watching Navy play football. The reason Navy plays football the way they do is because they an- analytically break down the best way to win a football game, and that's by minimizing risks. And what did Bill Belichick do last night against the Bills in a f- literal nor'easter he minimized the risk. Winds are insane. There's snow. It's cold. You have a rookie quarterback. You don't have the most elite receivers of all time. What do you do? Take the ball out of Mac Jones' hands and run the ball. Run the ball. Run the ball. And my and I will say this. I'm very glad this game happened week 13 as opposed to week five, six, because then, you know, Ramondre Stevenson still has the, those fumble jitters from week one messing up the, you know, messing up the Cowboys game, messing up the Dolphins game. This is a seven-game win streak. We know how to win now. We know how to close out games. Our running backs are solid. Bolden, Stevenson, Harris, they're all solid, ready to go. So that's what Bill Belichick did. He said, I'm going to ride with my offensive line that has shown their elite this season. I'm going to ride with my running backs who have shown they can protect the ball now. And I'm going to run it 45 goddamn times, and there's nothing you can do about it. Why would I have Mac Jones throw into the wind? Why would I have Mac Jones throw against the wind? That's going to blow it out. And we saw on the John O. Smith pass, he, the, he barely came down with it. Right. So Bill's whole strategy was, I'm not risking turnovers in this game. This is going to be a sloppy game. It's going to be a low-scoring, two-score, one-score game. And that's the reason the, the Patriots won. We didn't throw interceptions. We didn't fumble. The only mis- mistake was Nikhil Harry, and he shouldn't have been out there in the first place. So I know a lot of jokes about this being the Navy game, but that's why Navy plays football the way they do. They don't want to make, they don't want to turn the ball over and we didn't turn the ball over. Yeah. What, what's up with that? Nikhil? I, I don't understand what, the, that's the one knock I give on 
as much as much as it Nikhil Harry just get out of the way. You got to put that on coaching too. Like, why is he should out never there? Have been out there? Should never have been out there. Why? And you, Gunner's right there. You, Gunner's you really did send him out there to fail. Right. It like, and it's a guy that we've been asking to catch passes for three years and he can't do. Why would we expect him to catch a football or like be able to follow a simple instruction on a, on a punt? Like, I, I don't get it. We've had Gunner out there all day long. Why isn't Gunner? I mean, that's Gunner's job, right? He's the punt returner. He's a kickoff returner. Like, why isn't he there? And for some reasons, it got messed up. I don't know what happened, but that was bad. And it's funny. I think I tweeted it out. I am uh, right after I give Nikhil Harry so much uh, good credit for, hey, that's a good block from him to help with the Damian Harris uh, long touchdown. He comes and does that. It's like, it's, it's brutal. I, like, this is the frustration with Nikhil Harry because he'll do one good thing, a couple good things in a row. And you're like, man, he's kind of like finding his role on his team. That's productive. And then he does something stupid that costs us seven points. So that's just my frustration with him. And, but I don't put all of it on him. I put a lot of it on the coaching. Cause that was a, that was a bad play. No, and he, I, shouldn't, he shouldn't have been out there. In a game where the coaching they did so well, like I feel like this was a very well coached game by the Patriots. That was the one, I think that was one of the only things that I had negative to say. Uh, do you hear Sean McDermott after the game? Yeah, I, I'm Sean McDermott's a good coach, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drag him for being a bad coach, but. From what I've seen and seeing him on the sideline last night and hearing everything post game, that dude has such sour grapes. It's 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 actually insane and it's pretty it's pretty embarrassing if I'm not if I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. That dude, Bill Belichick is so deep inside that man's head that he can't <laughs> get out of his own way at this point. It's embarrassing, dude. Yeah, it like, is. You've you've <laughs> you've won one division. And that's because Cam Newton was playing quarterback for us in a COVID year. You have not, you haven't, you haven't proven anything. Bill right. Belichick has won the division. How many times at this point? 13, 14, 15, 16. Who are you to possibly say anything negative about Bill Belichick when he's won so much more than you have? I don't understand where this guy gets off. Yeah, I, I thought it was ridiculous, dude. He has 17 division titles, by there the way. There you go. Um, I I think it's the little brother mentality, man. I, I really do. Like, the Bills, like, have always been, like, that second-place team or, the like, right there, and they just can't get over the big, bad Patriots. And then finally last year, you know, Tom leaves. You know, the Patriots have Cam Newton, and that doesn't work out. And they just, you know, the Bills finally win the division and everyone's talking about, all right, this is, they have Josh Allen, they have Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, uh, Dawson, like they have a good team. And like, this is their time. Like the next 10 they had a years. One year the, window when it closed. They had a one year window with Josh Allen and Sean McDermott. And now it's like, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because it's slam shut. five weeks. Slam, I'll say it. Slam shut. Nails in the boards. They're done. Put a, put a nail, stick a fork in them. Absolutely. They're done. I mean, l- I mean, let's look at the standings right now. I mean, I, I think it's. They dropped uh, all the way to seven. Seven and five. So they're a game and a half back from the Patriots. They're the seven seed right now. The season ended right oh, now. Oh, they're a seven seed in the. They're the so seven. they're not even in the playoffs. No. How many? Eight. Eight make it. so they're they're the so seventh seed of the season ended today. Um, jeez, I I think that's all it is, and I mean, to say that let's not give Bill Belichick too much credit. I don't think we give him enough credit for what he does with this football team. Yes, they have a lot of talent. They spend a ton of money on this team, but he's doing it with a rookie quarterback. Bill Belichick he, has seven Super Bowl rings. Yeah. More than that, I'm sorry, because he got a couple uh, with the, the Giants. Giants. Bill Belichick has multiple Super Bowl rings. 
He has multiple division titles. He has multiple AFC championships. Who is Sean McDermott to say (laughs) that Bill Belichick gets too much credit? Yeah. He's the greatest coach of all time. Like they're going to rename the Lombardi after him. Like, right. I don't know where McDermott gets this, but it is pitiful, man. It's pitiful. And the funny thing is, is like, I think he was trying to cover uh, in that comment. I think he's trying to cover his own behind. To say like he didn't get out coached in this he game, he got coached a million percent. He got out coached a million percent, and he made McDermott made mistakes. He called that he wasted a timeout on that third down play late in the game. Um, he kicked a field goal into the wind. He kicked a field goal into the wind. It was just bad. I mean, Bill Belichick wouldn't even kick an extra point into the wind. He said, "We're going for two. I don't care." Like it's just. I, I agree. I don't know where this guy gets the gumption to say like that. Bill it's Belichick doesn't deserve credit. Sour grapes, dude. Like it's it, it, it's a little brother thing. This it dude is, is just a little brother. He's absolutely jealous that his time is over after one year. Yeah, he, and, he's, and he's he's on the hot seat too. Like I was looking through some of the Twitter, uh, the tweets from some of the threads after his comments. Dude, Bills fans were not happy with him. Dude, the Bills. Before, the, like a couple weeks ago, the bill. First of all, the bill. You talk about New England and Boston media and Boston fans being hard on your team. The Bills fans are brutal. They said after the was it the Jacksonville loss or like within like it was either last week or two weeks ago. Jeepers crow, this microphone. Um, they did a poll. Do you think the team's gonna make the play? Bills are gonna make the playoffs. Like 60% said no. It's like, and they were, you know, what is it? They were seven and seven and four. They, yeah, at, least four had a, whatever. they at least had a share of first place at that point still. Yeah. They, I mean, they lose one game and they, they lose a couple games and the bills are like, they're not going to make the playoffs. And now they're the seven seed. So it's like, you know, that's a little closer, but at the time, I mean, the Bills were in first. I think the Bills were still in first place when that poll went out. So it's like Bills fans are tough. And Sean McDermott, when he's making comments like that and he's losing games, it's, you know, you lost to you, Jacksonville, you, bro. Yeah, you lost you to Jacksonville. You can't be making those comments when you haven't won anything. Like, right. It's one thing if you won the Super Bowl last year and you're like, we're the top dogs now. We're the defending champs. We're the division winners. You won the division, and that's it, my man. That's all you did. The Patriots had one down season, and now we're back. So right. you can't be making these comments when your so-called reign of terror was one season, whereas the Patriots owned you the last 20 goddamn years. And get and ready for another and, 20. Exactly, and now we're back for more. So you can, you can, you know, you can piss and moan all you want, Sean McDermott, but it's inevitable. We're back. The most uh, most uh, disappointing thing about this was because up until like this game, really, I kind of like Sean McDermott. I was kind of a, like, you know, had nothing negative to say. But now I'm like, pound sand, dude, like get like enjoy, enjoy the either the wild card or the, you know, in an early off season, dude. Like it's like it's crazy like i i don't get where this guy gets so excited and now guess what sean mcdermott you get to go to tampa and you get to play them this week and tom now, brady was now, hot last now week. tom brady gets to shove it up your ass this week yeah i can't wait and then you come back here to gillette and we're gonna yeah. shove it up your ass again and uh did you hear bill he was joke. i don't know if you heard it. on ei this morning he was like joking around and he said they said what is there anything that you know it was something about like anything you got prepared for them uh, for next time. Did the weather play like, is there weather like affect anything watching film or whatever? I don't know, but he's like, yeah, uh, we can run any passing play. We had ready for them. Cause we didn't run one. Uh, he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like we got the whole passing playbook open. Cause we didn't, we That's passed a really three good point. Times. We didn't, we didn't, sh- we didn't uh, show our hand at all. That's a really good point. Uh, the, you know what? One thing that I don't know if you noticed, like, I feel like Bill is totally different. He's the same. He's the same Bill Belichick between the you know between the lines, but off off like field, I feel like Bill's totally different this year. 
I feel like he's playing with a lot like loose. He's, he's having playing, a lot like, more fun now. He, I think he's yeah. having a lot more fun. Rookie quarterback. This team's, you know, really really showing what they're made of in this seven game win streak. Obviously when he makes everything better, but right. Everything I've seen and heard, man, he's having fun right now. He's having fun. Like last it's last a blank week, slate. It's a blank right. slate. It's a whole new team. I think it gives them more life. Like I think this extends uh, from a, I don't know if this is true, but I, I, I think of it as it extends his career a little bit. Cause I feel like it gave him a little juice. Mm. You know, he's joking around last week with Kendrick Bourne, giving the stiff arm. He gives Kendrick Bourne the stiff arm. He's, he's, you know, hugging everyone. He's, you know, he had that great moment with his son after the game. Like this was a big game and he was, ex- he's showing emotion. <laughs> like, like a guy that, doesn't show any emotion. He's showing emotion, and uh, it's exciting to see because Bill excited makes me excited. I got to be honest with you. Like anytime I see Bill give a fist pump, I get a little uh, get a little fired up. Yeah, it's so, weird. The uh, the Patriots are having fun. Have no, yeah. this, despite what Lane Johnson had to say a couple of years ago, the Patriots are having fun. After forty years of not having any fun in that football team, we're now having some fun. Uh, Quick look ahead in the uh, AFC. Uh, well, for the Patriots, sorry, not the AFC. Um, they have a bye week this week, which, you know, it give them some rest, rest up, get some guys healthy. Um, but, you know, we after the bye, we got a Saturday, Saturday night game. Yeah, I know. Weird. We're going Saturday. We're at that time of the year, Danny football, Saturday night. Um, we're playing against the Colts at, in Indianapolis. I hate the Colts, so it would be great to shove a win right in Jim Harrison's face. And that's going to be a win. Uh, we got to win that one. That's going to be a win. win. Off that, a bye, that, we're going to destroy the Colts, yeah. I swear to God. Um, then we got the Bills at home, and that's the biggest game of the year, I think. Like uh, This was the biggest game of the year, but this will be the biggest game for the last four weeks. Um, and that's the day after Christmas. That can... That could, uh, no. That would probably seal the division, right? Depending on how the next they have a uh, game and they have a game in hand, which they'll use this week. There'll be a game back, right? There'll be a game back, but they that the, I mean they have to beat the Bucks, so I'm not really sure. They have to beat the Bucks. So if they if they lose to the Bucks, they'll be two games back. They'll be a game and a half back. No, they're a game and a half back now. Oh, they are. Yeah, oh, yeah we were we, a half game up. Right, 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 right. right so right. we're a game and a half. We're a game and a half. If they up, lose, it'll be two full back. Gotcha. Two gotcha, full gotcha. back, and then if we beat them on the that Bills, that the locks division, it. That would lock the division up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that that would be huge. Get some help from Tommy, and then come. Well, no, because there's a game in between there. I mean, because we play the Colt. We don't play them right away. They play. Uh, you know, I don't know who. The, oh, who they, so it, it could be over at that point. Um. Yeah, it depends on how the next couple of weeks go. They play the Bucks and then the Panthers. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it, I, I don't know how that. So there's a you chance know. you could be going into Gillette with a chance to clinch the division. Right. Right. Uh, and then and then that would be huge because then you have those two cupcake games, and if it doesn't really matter. But that uh, the one seed. Well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, you want to play for the one seed. If for how if somehow the one seed is locked up, then you get to rest everyone. I because would rest everyone. Like Judon, rest. Harris, rest. Anyone on defense oh, who needs it, rest. Offensive line, if anyone needs it, rest. Everyone. We could be seeing a Jared Sidib game. No, Brian. I don't Warrior think I'm ready game. for that. Brian Warrior I'm game. not Brian ready. Warrior game. <laughs> Brian Warrior game. Um. Yeah, I mean, we got to kind of watch out because the Chiefs are hot. They're they, we've won seven. They've won five in a row, and they're eight and four. They're half a game back from us in the division. So, I I want that one seed bad. If we're going uh, to the yeah, playoffs, I want that. the one seed bad. We need so, we need the road to go through Gillette, right? So, and I mean the Ravens, the I mean you you have the uh, the Ravens are eight and four, and then the Titans. I mean, you have the tiebreaker against them, but they're eight and four. So you lose, you drop one of those games, and they win. They go up. You know what I mean? They they or win, lose a couple of these games, uh, or they win this week and they go nine and four. And you drop one, and they win one. That's what I like. I think it's important. We got to take each of these games. Very, we can't take any of these games lightly. 
And like I like you said, I, I'd like them to close. I it's very unlikely they go undefeated. You know, they've they've closed out the uh season winning eleven straight, going eleven and oh to end the season. I don't see why not. But I I mean looking at the schedule, I don't see why not. Bills is the only one I'm you know, that's gonna be a tough game, even though we dominated them. That's still a good football team. And if we can dominate them again, which we should at home, it's a wrap, dude. This team's going to win 11 and 0. I'm not worried about the Jags. I'm not worried about the Dolphins. We need to bl- we'll blow them out and go into the playoffs getting a nice bye to rest. Uh but I'm excited, man. Football is back in New England. It's it's like it's it's exciting and everyone else is so mad about it. It's like Zoe said a couple of years ago, man, America's worst nightmare is back. And now it's Mac Jones at the helm. We have a young kid at the helm. It's not Tom Brady, who everyone can kind of cross their fingers and hope that he's going to be gone in a couple of years. Mac Jones is here to stay and he's going to be here for a, a while. So I, I, I'm excited. I mean, we won't have, we won't be able to talk Pats next week. So got a lot of Pats talking this week. So Let's move on to our next segment of the night, the Picks of the Week. Picks of the Week. So for Picks of the Week, we pick one game from the upcoming uh, NFL week. Uh, And right now, I tied it up. Dave Football tied it up with my Pats pick. Coming down the stretch. Very excited. It's A. It's anyone's anyone's game. Five, uh, five weeks of the regular season and a couple playoff weeks. Do we end it before the playoffs? We'll have to figure it out if we end it before the playoffs. Um, I, don't, I don't see why we can't pick some playoff games. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. But who's your pick of the week? I'm going Chiefs over Raiders. I know that doesn't help with them. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. That doesn't help with, a, help with us uh, clinching the one seed. But let you, you already mentioned, man, they're hot as hell. Um, the Raiders actually had a good showing last week. I thought they were kind of going to start slipping a little bit, but they're kind of an up and down team. It's a division game. Um, I do expect the Raiders to kind of give them a fight, but I think the chiefs are starting to hit that gear that I think they're, I think they're in a roll. Um, and I think it's going to be a dog fight for that one seed, but I do trust bill to, uh, be able to game plan for the chiefs. So I think it's going to be chiefs over Raiders and we're gonna have to see how this one seed race goes. Yeah, they they're very hot. I mean, I think it uh for the Raiders case it depends if they get a healthy Darren Waller back. True. Uh because that will help their offensively. Uh but I think you're right. I hope you're wrong, but I hope I I think you're right on that one. Oh, I'd love a Chiefs loss, but I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Loss. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh I'm going to go help the Pats out and I'm going Bucks over Bills. If I can't pick my Patriots, I'm picking Tommy baby. I'm going Bucks over Bills. I think this Bucks is a, are gonna a roll. lock game, a lock. This is a you lock. You think it's a lock? This is a lock. Bucks over Bills, lock it in. Lock it in. Sharpie. All right. Write it in Sharpie. That's a Danny. We got to get a t-shirt for Danny. For Bills. <laughs> write it in Sharpie. Uh, moving on to waiver pickups. I'm going Amon St. Brown. I, another team that's hot right now is the Detroit Lions. Coming out, they're one and zero in their last game. Jeez. They're one and zero, undefeated in the last week, undefeated in one week. So I'm going to Mon St. Brown, the man who had the walk off touchdown. He had ten catches, twelve targets, eighty six yards, and a touchdown. Uh, I see this guy as a good keeper value. He's you know no one has him. He's rostered in six point five percent of leagues. No one drafted him. He's going to be available in any league you're in. If you're out of the playoffs or like looking for someone just to get a keeper uh, and you don't have anyone else, I'm thinking of just putting them on my roster myself and just keeping them there and maybe keeping them next year. So, uh, and it, I mean, it, 12 targets, like that's a lot of targets. That's, that's uh, a healthy Jared, amount. Jared Goff is looking his way and he's catching a lot of them. It, I mean, 10 catches. That's, that's, that's a really good day. So I'm going to Mont St. Brown locking in. Nice. I'm Sharpie. Go, Sharpie. I'm going to go Ricky Seals Jones, uh, tight end for Washington. He's rostered 6.3% uh, percent of leagues. Uh, I mean, it's a tight end. If you need a tight end towards the end of the year, I know it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a thin position at this point. Um, he's coming off a good week. 
you know, playoff race. Maybe you want to just kind of stash some guys. I know in the rocks, the, the league we do with the rocks um, interns at this point, people are just stashing people just so other people can have them. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to just kind of pick someone up, just so someone can't use them against you, I'm going Ricky Seals Jones. I like it. Uh, just a fantasy uh, in the BRZ fantasy football. A uh, little update. Was there any ever any doubt who would be the two <laughs> one and two seed in the uh, BR, BRZ league? Uh, I am currently in the I, I don't know how, but I dominate this year. I'm just going to say it right now. I dominated and I hope to continue this into the playoffs. Uh, I finished. Uh, no, I shouldn't say I finished because we still got one more week, but I'm 11 and two. I have the one seed. Danny football is officially. Are you official? Yeah, you officially locked up the two seed. We'll both be on by. Hell yeah. We both won our divisions. And the champ is still, I think he's pretty much locked into the, he's not officially locked, but he's got about two, 200 points more than anyone else. So, uh, uh, he's pretty much locked in there. I, I got to see how the points fall, but. Uh, it's a close race between, I believe, our man Jared Haven. Shout out Jared Haven, Andy Terrio. Shout out Andy Terrio and Mr. Jack Moran. So uh, two of the three of those people will be in the playoffs. The other one will be uh, taking an early vacation with our friend, <laughs> our, our good friend James, Dave Griffin, and what a uh, fall from grace, from Aaron Dave Goff. Griffin. I mean, I think was it a fall from grace or just a fall back to reality for Dave Griffin? I don't the, know. The, the clock struck midnight on a Cinderella run. Uh, yeah, I, 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 and the funny thing is, I thought Dave Griffin had a great draft. I thought he had a way better draft. Than I last know we year. shit we shit on his draft, and he comes in second, and then we praise his draft, and he falls out of the playoffs. So, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, that's gonna be a good toilet bowl. Uh, Negative reinforcement only for Dave. I guess he, he likes to prove the doubters wrong. Yeah, I mean, he's, good, he had no bulletin board material this year. That's right. And I mean, I mean, he's too focused on uh, cracking that. Mets ah, right. That's a good Mets, point. He's uh, trying to he's trying to get into that starting five. So, I mean, I think he should. I think he should get up there. Him, uh, Scherzer, and Degrom. Yeah, I think that would be a what a great one, two, three. Shout out Dave Griffin. Will the New York Mets finally call him up, please? Because I mean, how much does the kid have to prove down there and dominate down in the down in uh, Brooklyn, the minors, Brooklyn? Uh, but Rob Marcello, I mean, surprise of the year. I mean, he's doing great. I mean, I'm not too surprised, I guess. But no, uh, he had a really he, good draft. He had a really good draft. Uh, it's looking like he'll be the three. He could potentially be the three seed, but I mean, it's too early to call all within a game, uh, but we will let you know on the, how the chips fall with this, but we know the top two dogs who are going to get a buy next week. I may not even play any players. Give my guys two sit, weeks rest. Sit everyone. Uh, moving on to our quick update. I mean, it's been a while. We won't talk too much about it. Uh, we just, you know, the news broke as always as breaking news happens after our pod was released. Uh, the Sox made a flurry of moves before the lockout happened, which we'll get into in a little, a few minutes. Um, they bring back Rich Hill for about the 20th time. Uh, I, ready to go. Ready to bring him back. I mean, I think I looked the first time he signed was over 22 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, welcome back Rich Hill. Uh, the guy that I couldn't remember his name, James Paxton. He signed Big Maple, the, uh, dude. Big Maple. Uh, geez. Uh, he's no Scherzer, but you know what? Give me a little starting depth. Uh, and the guy that everyone loves and everyone loves to hate, JBJ was traded for with a couple of prospects. For dude, Hunter good Renfro. prospects. Good prospects. Yeah. So here's my two cents on the trade. Okay. I think it was time. I said it last year. It was time to let JBJ go. And I was okay with it. Bringing him back. I feel like we're going backwards with that. With that said. Here's you get two good, really good prospects, which is right up uh, Heim Bloom's alley. He loves prospects. He loves going cheap. And I think the Red Sox, I really do got scared from Hunter Renfro's 
performance in the playoffs. It reminded me a lot of how he was in Tampa the year before. So, I mean, maybe they were like, man, maybe this was like, he just played out of his mind this year and let's get what we can for him. Cause he's on a one year deal. Like he's only at one more year left of his deal. And they were able to get a serviceable center fielder where they can move Kike probably back to second. And they got two prospects that they can uh, stash in their farm system, build up the farm system. Dude, I'm going to be the one to say it. The Worcester Red Sox are going to be absolutely loaded this season. <laughs> They're going to be loaded this season between, Ooh. between whoever doesn't make the 40 man for the Red Sox and all these freaking prospects that we're bringing in. We brought up Cassis from the Sea Dogs. We got, Dur- I mean, Duran's still a possibility to come back. Who knows? Connor Siebold, how, who knows? Dude, the, the Worcester Red Sox are going to be <laughs> to the gills with prospects. <laughs> to the gills. They're going to be so good. I think that's what we're high moon focused on, just winning championships. He, he's, build, he's building AAA up. Let's go. We're going to get a title down here in Worcester. We're going to be good to go. I can't wait for the uh, Woo Sox to win a title and then the Red Sox win the title. A couple times. Oh, my God. Has that ever happened? I'm sure that's I was just about to ask that. the same thing. You can, sure you, can, you can go on about whatever is next, but I'll, I'll look that up. Well, um, I, 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 like I said, I kind of, I like the trade in a sense. I, it's like, I'd say the same thing about bringing um, Andrew Benintendi back. It's like, I, I kind of want to move on, but listen, we got two prospects. I think, I think JBJ only has one more year on his deal. So we'll live with it. Rich Hill. You know, get the big lefty back in here. And uh, James Paxton, we'll see what he does. I mean, I, I have uh, Garrett Richards vibes from this guy. So uh, we'll have to see. And the big news is, which is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, disappointing. The lockout happens right after that. They announce they're going to have the MLB lockout. I, I, I'm just so like, I, I, and I don't know all the technical stuff about this. I, I'm not going to pretend I know all this stuff, but I feel like the owners kind of got to get their heads out of their behinds, especially our owner who I can't stand. Who's more interested in bringing the Pittsburgh penguins to <laughs> Boston. It's like, it's, it's the most annoying thing ever. And I, I, I mean, I'm interested to hear your take on the whole thing, but I, I just think this is ridiculous and we need to just come to some kind of agreement and get this moving along. Because it, it, it I, I, sorry, I know oh, I just no, passed no, that. But I mean, we are, like we're saying, baseball's dying and blah, 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 but this is adding to it. It's been one of the most boring off seasons of all time. Like there's been nothing. There's still huge key market free agents and it took months it took over a month to get the first big name free agent off the board and we still have you know i i don't know how many names still available so i mean this is just hurting the game it's boring i i i think like the off season i think this needs to get fixed so we can start doling out the money and start bringing in some like get some free agent signings I was, I mean, I was just going to say that it's unfortunate. I mean, you have such a good playoffs. Like, I feel like baseball was really buzzing. You had the Field of Dreams game that got everyone's attention. I felt like MLB really had the ball rolling on something good here. And, of course, the, the owners can't get out of their own way. So, we have a lockout. Um, will it be as detrimental as the 94 strike? Probably not. I have a feeling this will get figured out before it starts affecting like spring training and yeah. uh, the start of the season. But it's just unfortunate that the one off season where like free agents are moving and trades are happening, you know, and like there's a real buzz, they shut it down. Like you, yeah. you were having a good buzz, like headline grabbing off season and you guys couldn't get out of your own way. And now here we are. You can't have contact with anyone. The Red Sox have interest in Trevor's story and they can't talk to him now because there's a lockout. Yeah. So it's unfortunate because right now we could be talking about how the Patri- Patriots, we could be talking about how the Red Sox are adding Trevor's story and how that, how that's huge for the depth and huge for our um, defense and, you know, our lineup. 
and we can't. We we have nothing to talk about now apart from what was able to take place before the lockout happened. So it's it's greed. It's Manfred being a you know we say it all the time. Just a terrible, terrible commissioner. No feel for this league at all. An absolute suit who has no idea what he's doing. And the owners just being greedy. I, I don't know what the CBA situation is right now, what the kind of how their negotiations negotiations are going, but it's just unfortunate, man. I mean, we see this in all the leagues. The NFL did it to themselves a couple of years ago. The NHL had that 04 lockout, which killed them for a whole season, nearly, you know, killed the league. Um, and then the NBA, oh, fast, had, that the NBA had their shortened season a couple of years ago when they started on Christmas because they couldn't figure it out. So it's just unfortunate that this happens. It's it sucks. Yeah, it is unfortunate. I don't think this is going to last too long. Give it a couple weeks, maybe a month or so. I like I'll start getting really nervous when it's in the spring tra- going into spring training time and you know, when I was like, "Oh man, we kind of got to get this uh show on the road." But uh I I think it's going to be okay. I think it's uh it's going to end soon. Uh but it is. It's just it's just doesn't help. Doesn't help the game. Uh Celtics not real quick, just real quick update uh, coming from where we're at. There's seven and four from when we, uh, for the last two weeks or the last three weeks, whatever I just added, they were two and one over the last week. Uh, Danny football looking, they're looking better than we thought they were going to be, but they, it's still they've early. Turned a corner. They've turned a corner, but they are losing some really bad games. I don't really want to talk about it. It's pretty disappointing. Uh, it's just frustrating. I don't want to buy in when I know they're going to lose, but rumor has it through the grapevine, Danny football. I'm hearing rumors. Uh, Dennis Schroeder could be on the trade block. Uh, dude, did you see that? The, um, Jesus, the, the Pacers may be blowing it up. Levert, really? Miles Turner. A lot of people are going to be on the trade block from the Pacers. Do you move Dennis Schroeder for Depends someone who, like that? De- de- oh, for like a Levert or Miles Turner? I'd move, yeah. I'd move. Uh. See, now Miles Turner isn't as attractive as he once was. Right. Now Rob Williams is really holding it down, which I knew he was going, going to the entire time. The only question was, would health. Brad believe in him? Or it, it was health and would Brad actually give him the keys? And then Brad took himself out of the equation. Um, so Miles Turner, not so much. But, you know, Levert's a good player. He might be a little bit better than Schroeder, but he, again, he has some health issues that unfortunately he needs to deal with. And, um, that, you know, it becomes a question of, can you trust it? So I, I, I'd be more inclined to roll with Schroeder as opposed to kind of rolling the dice on yeah. either of those guys. Yeah. I kind of want to roll the dice with him too. He's his best player, right? Like he's been the best player on the court for the Celtics. Uh, I get he's on a one-year deal and you're not going to get him for that low of money next year. Uh, some, you know, the thought process there is, I guess, try to get what you can for him. Uh, but it's, it's definitely a tough call because I, I, I just think he is like helping you win games. Like, like he's definitely, if the goal is to win a championship, uh, give yourself a best chance to win a championship. I feel like you got to keep him on the roster. So I like to see them just roll the dice and see if they can resign them. If they don't resign them. Oh, well, but hopefully it, you get a championship out of it. Uh, and I mean, RIP to once was the hottest team in the uh, New England. The Revs lose in the first round. Shocking upset. Also, can we just say this, Danny Football? This is why I don't like soccer. There's so many stupid rules. I know you play at Danny Football and this is your game, but let me tell you something. In a playoff Playoff game, why in the world are you going to goal kicks? I feel like this has got to be OT and just play it out. No, that's that's how it, that's it's that's just how it is in in um, European soccer, which MLS has been doing their best to try to like capture that like that that I don't want to say European feel, but they're playing the MLS is trying to play more of a traditional European style of structure. I mean, over in um, over in England, dude, they don't they don't play overtime. They don't do shootouts. They they just have ties. And this is I'm talking regular regular season. So regular season, there is no shootouts. There is no overtime. Once the game's over, the game's over. If you tie, you tie. Um, if you win, you win. You lose, you lose. Um, 
in England, and I, I believe a lot of, I believe it's mo- all of the European leagues. I could be wrong, but I know in England, they don't even do playoffs, man. Like the best regular season team, that's the champion. There is no playoffs. If you're the best team in the regular season, you win the championship and you can clinch the championship with weeks to go too. So if they, if MLS did that, the revs would have been champions two months ago. Um, but we do playoffs here in MLS, just like, you know, regular American sports, um, and how Europe does it. They do overtime, two overtime periods. And if the overtime periods are tied, it's shootouts. And this is how they do it for, um, all their cup games and world cup does it. Um, champions league does it. So all the European tournaments do this. It's two overtime halves. If you, if you're still tied, you just go to shootouts. Um, it's more for player safety. We see it with football here. You know, you can't just have guys going forever. And that's what would happen in soccer, man. You're only allowed so many substitutions in soccer that at a certain point, these guys are gassed. And you could see in that revs NY, NYC FC game, those, some of those guys were absolute toast because you can only make so many subs. So if you can only make three, four or five subs, there are going to be guys out there who are playing 90 minutes, 105 minutes, 115 minutes, 120 minutes, and they're just done. So it's a huge ass to kind of tell them to keep going. I enjoy the shootout. Um, I think it's good suspense. It is unfortunate that a whole se- a record breaking season comes down to shootouts, but at the same time, man, like that's why you finish it in regulation. That's why you don't give up a goal in the first three minutes and have to claw your way back. That's why you don't give up a goal in the dying embers of the first half of overtime, because then you have to work your way back. And you and me mentioned this before the, before we started recording that buy killed them, man, being the one seed and sitting for three weeks that absolutely killed them. Meanwhile, New York was playing a play in game. They got hot and now they're going to the championship too. Now they're going to the championship. M- NYCFC is in the, in, is in MLS cup. And we see it in baseball all the time. Wild card teams get hot. The Red Sox got hot. The Nationals got hot, won the World Series. Uh, teams just catch fire, man. And it's unfortunate that the Revs went down like this. Still a successful season. Um, Carlos Hill won the MVP. So we had the MVP on our team. We had the best goalkeeper on our team. Um, there are a lot of good positives to take from the season. Um, I think they'll be able to run it back next season. Will it be record breaking? Probably not. That'll be so hard to replicate, but I think they'll be, they're in a good spot for next season. Um, and we'll just have to see where they go from there. Well, we still love the revs. That's what I'm saying, dude. You know, so we can, we can be build disapp- them a new stadium. We can be disappointed and we can be upset, but at the same time, like we're still, I'm, I still ride for them. They they've been hurting me since I was a kid. I can, I can rock with this. And also, give us your UMass Lowell uh, update from the game that you went to last week. Here we go. All right, this is this is where we get, get the pos- get the positivity the positivity at the bottom of the sandwich here. That's right. Should I give you two minutes for ref- Is it two minutes for roughing? We haven't had two minutes for roughing in a while. We can we'll break out the two, two minutes. minutes rough- we can break out a two minutes for roughing. Let's bring out a two minutes for roughing. This is a spontaneous two minutes for roughing. There we go. Let me. Uh... Tell us what the two minutes for roughing is, Danny, for love for our new listeners. So two minutes for roughing. We're going to go two minutes. I'm going to run down the uh, anything UMass Lowell, what we got going on, games that happen, games coming up, where they're standing. But uh, I'm good to go. Whenever you're ready to hit the timer. Ready to go? Let's go. Three, Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. So uh, we were back in the Songus Friday night, UMass Lowell, UMass Amherst. Pretty good rivalry game going. Number 13, UMass versus 14, UMass Lowell. A lot on the line, my man. Hockey East, bragging rights, you know, UMass system bragging rights. Dude, UMass came out and punched us in the mouth. They went up two to zero, second period. UMass Lowell storms back. We got a couple penalty. We, um, we got a couple power play goals. We go up 3 2. UMass ties at 3 3. We go into the third period. We go up 4 3. And then 90 seconds left, UMass ties at 4-4. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I'm like, I can't do overtime right now. Mm-hmm. We go to overtime. Uh, we, go on the, we, we go on the penalty kill, and it's fourth. They play three-on-three overtime. It's 4-3. UMass is killing me. They're trying to score a goal. They can't do it. We kill it. Go to shootouts. And 
Savory stands on his head, the UMass Lowell goalie. And I, t- I tell everyone that listens, UMass Lowell is goaltender university. We just build goalies different there. He stands on his head. We get a goal. We, we score on the shootout. We win in the shootouts 5-4. Huge win for UMass Lowell, my man. We're having a great season so far. Underdogs. No one was picking us to go anywhere this season. So I'm loving where we're at. We dropped the, we dropped the away game to Mass the next day at Mullen Center, but that, I'm not going to worry about that. We're not but talking I, about that one. We're, we're only talking about, about that. The, we're talking about the Friday game. That's so, right. As it stands right now, we're eight, three, and three. We're right where we want to be. We're playing Vermont this weekend. Two games up in Vermont, tenth and eleventh, um, and then we go on Christmas break. So, close out Hockey East. Get two easy wins over Vermont. Reset. Come back in the new year. And dude, I'm ready to see where this team can go. I'm I'm feeling good about this UMass Lowell team. They have a lot of fight in them, and I enjoy it. Uh, closing seconds. What's uh. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you you kind of wrapped that up in a bow. You're pretty good at this two minutes for roughing. <laughs> That's it. That's two minutes for roughing. So, uh, I mean, I did want to say one thing. No one picked them except for you. I always pick them and every year. They get disrespected. I, I picked them just because you were so confident. <laughs> I, I don't really know anything, but I've been adopted into the UMass little uh, there you go. Hockey. You're part of it. Um, uh, you go. Who did you uh, go with? Did you go with the wife? I, I brought the wife, the, uh, the boy who, uh, unfortunately is a UMass alum herself. So it was a good little, uh, good little, in, good little inter rivalry there. Good to see us get one. I like it. So we're going to move on to our final segment of the night. Uh, the people's topic. It's the people's topic. So for people's topic, you can write on our Instagram and Twitter page at Big Red Zone. Uh, we put the thing up on our story. You can write in, message us, DM us, whatever you want. First up, we're going to go with uh, Vicky. Vicky said just beating the Bills. We talked about that, Vicky. We are very excited. Huge win over the Bills. Huge win. Uh, Ed wants us to talk about Nikhil Harry. We talked about that. Terrible. Unfortunate. Just positive. Unfortunate. Un- unfortunate mr big bread says me all right you know what uh I'm gonna, I, I i'm gonna cut molly off and answer the question from uh earlier there was one instance where a triple a team and a major league team affiliate were in the same championship series the omaha storm chasers won the 2013 triple a championship and the kansas city royals lost the world series that year to the new york giants Oh man! So, so we were that is... we were that close to getting a major league and a minor league team winning in the same year. Well, the Red Sox are going to do it next year with the Woo Sox. Let's run it. Let's do it. My 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 faith is in the Woo Sox. Really, I think so. Right? I don't I see how it can't be. I mean, they I... they are easily the most loaded team. And I'm going to say this right now. Sorry, Molly, but Clint Frazier, f- former Yankee, is now officially a shock a Chicago Cub. So my fellow fellow ginger is free. I can root for this guy now. Yeah, I the, the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders, the the Yankees AAA affiliate, fucked. You don't have Clint Frazier anymore. You're fucked. So it's Woo Sox all day long in that division now. I don't know why the Yankees didn't give that guy a shot. He is Never ten times better. Never ten times better shot. than Brett Gardner. Brett Gardner, you're gonna put him out there, and you have Clint Frazier in uh, in Scranton. That's it's my like, dude, Clint Frazier, official Zach guy right there. He's a really nice guy, too. I He was in Scranton when I was in Pawtucket. There you go. He's a good dude. Good dude. Really nice cleats. Yeah. Um, yeah. He always, wear the, he always uh, wears the Jordan 1 cleats. He has a ton of customs. Like he, he has a really a bunch of different ones. Uh, does that answer your question, Mr. Big Red? I think so. Uh, I saw Mr. Big Red on Sunday. It was a night. We had a nice little time. There we go. Uh Oh, wait. All right. So let's go to Instagram. Let's go to Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Pause, pause. Remember, you can write it on Instagram and Twitter at Big Red Zone. All right. Uh, all right. We got a few on Instagram. Ed, oh, Ed. I'm sorry. Ed, Ed texted me that talking about Nikhil Harry, but he gave a little more in depth one on uh, Instagram. So this one comes from Ed, aka EFITS94 on Instagram. Uh, Nikhil Harry's future as a Patriot. Give him a chance and convert him into a tight end? Question mark. 
Uh, I wouldn't. I'd give him a chance at tight end if he wants to try. If he, if honestly, if he wants to give it a shot, I would. I would see what would happen. You know, let him bulk up a little bit. Pass blocking tight end, run blocking tight end. Then he he has the ability to kind of split off and make a catch if he has to. And that would change the coverage on him if he lines up a tight end as opposed to a receiver. That would change who who covers him. So if he, I mean, if he's open to it, I I'd I'd maybe give him a shot. I this is the player comp I heard earlier, and I think it's like pretty accurate. He is like Dwayne Allen. <laughs> oh, no. That's what he is like, and it's crazy. He's a smaller Dwayne Allen. Like he's gonna block for you. Maybe make one or two catches, and that's it. Like that's that's like what he is until he proves otherwise. That's all I would trust him with. Sure, make him a tight end, make him a blocker, which is kind of what he is now. But when you have Hunter Henry and Juana Smith on the depth chart ahead of him, I mean, this guy's just going to be blocking. That's all I can see. And maybe run out for a couple catches here and there. He makes. I will say he makes one unbelievable catch a game and that's it. Like that's like what he does. He'll like make one one handed catch or one. Like, I mean, he, I think we talked about this before. That's what he was in college. He would like be a guy that you throw it up to him and he just goes and gets it. Um, but yeah, I'm not too high in the kill area right now. This comes from the wife, Danny football page. P Willis, 90, uh, 17. Will the Celtics make a trade this season for a young player? Younger player. Um, uh, I mean, they have some pieces they can move around. Like you, you mentioned Schroeder earlier. Um, I wouldn't want them to move Al, but they could always move Al. So they have, they have some pieces they could move, <laughs> but I'm kind of liking what they have going on right now. I don't know if you kind of want to start messing with it, but. <laughs> There are pieces out there that they could bring in. I just don't know who Brad would be most comfortable with kind of giving up on. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's too early. I, I think, uh, you know, towards the deadline, if they're kind of out of it or they're low on the, you know, the standings, I think that's when you make that move for a younger player. Uh, but, like, they're not going to trade Tatum for, you know, a young player or something. So, it's got to be Schroeder or one of those guys if we're out of it for a playoff team that's kind of looking to make a move or something like that. So uh, too early to call, Paige. Too early to call, but thank you for the question. Uh, this one, come final one, comes from Joseph underscore Celia, our man. Um, what AFC team is you think? Geez, Joe. Joey, come on, man. What AFC team is you think is the biggest threat to the Pats? Uh, I'd say right now the Chiefs. I go to the Chiefs, too. It's the second hottest team in the AFC. Five games in a row. I'm not worried about the Titans. Um, I'm not worried about the Bills. I'm not worried about the Ravens. I, the Chiefs are really the only ones that are showing any signs of any sort of life right now. Right. I agree. In the AFC, I, I would have to say the Chiefs. So uh, great questions by all. Appreciate it. Uh, you can write in, remember in our write into our Instagram or Twitter page at Big Red Zone. Give us a follow. Also follow us on TikTok, Big Red Zone. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video as well as all the other videos. You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, big week, good week, Daddy Football. Uh, th- my thanks to you for joining. As always, have a great week, everyone. <laughs>